Hey guys, GHD here, back with another video. Today, I will be giving you my own version of a sewers guide. Now, we all know that since the Abyss lost its guaranteed death drop, the urge to want to do sewers is becoming way more relevant now. And since the Toxic Sewers is around Abyss level difficulty, it's not going to be a dungeon that you'll just breeze through initially. And honestly, I probably would argue that it's even harder than the Abyss, as there are way more status effects and debuffs in the Sewers itself. So first things first, we should talk about the layout. Now, unlike the complete jumbled mess of Abyss layouts, sewers follow a more direct straight route, similar to that of the Manor of Immortals, where you all have just horizontal and vertical sections. It does have its fair share of dead ends though, as it's a little harder to tell which way you're trying to go to get to the boss because you're only going in vertical and horizontal sections most of the time. Something that you will notice as soon as you enter the dungeon is the presence of sewer water in every single room. If you enter, you will be sickened, meaning that any healing effect won't work. So that includes priest buffs, pally regen buffs, HP buffs, pet heals, and your own vitality. So it's important to get out of the water whenever possible as soon as you can. You're also slowed a little in the water, but it's not really too noticeable. Just stay out as much as you can, basically. As we're talking about the layout currently, it's also important to note that like the Abyss of Demons, there are treasure rooms. They look like this and have a master rat chilling at the center and only activates if you walk over or shoot him. Think of him like a dying Thessal that spawns coral gifts. So upon activation, he'll ask you at random one of five questions to which you must reply with the respective answer. If you answer correctly, he'll then spawn four ninja turtles in the room, which have a chance at dropping power pizza and the void blade, which is one of the two white bags to be obtained in this dungeon. But if you can't answer the question in time, whatever you do, don't stand on top of him. If you're not maxed, it's more than likely going to insta-kill you with a shotgun of damage. So if you plan to run sewers, have the wiki page open in the background with the answers on so if you come across one you can then copy paste them in as soon as possible. There are a total of 11 different dungeon minions to be found in the sewers. The good thing is that not many of them are actually too powerful, however with all the debuffs the damage does add up if you're not careful. If I had to say to stay out and watch out for any specifically it would be the alligator which does 40 damage and it shoots I think 3 shots that armor pierce. They are pretty much the brutes so just avoid them or kill them as soon as you can. And I would also say to stay away from the nature slime gods, which have a higher death drop chance than regular slimes, kind of like the sprite, nature sprites in the sprite world. Aside from this, most other enemies aren't actually too bad. They are kind of overwhelming at times, so it is nice to kind of clear out enemies as you go and just stop them from overwhelming you and just like shoot backwards, kind of like abyss rushing. The Warlock will slow you, the Goblin Saucer will confuse you with his red bomb, so avoid that if you're not too confident with confused controls. And it's just important to note that some enemies armor pierce you, but it's not really that much damage, so don't be scared of taking the damage if you need to. Another unique feature of the sewers is the presence of two treasure room types. Aside from the actual treasure rooms, you can encounter a rare enemy type called a golden rat, which will then say squeak in the chat, so if you see that, you know there's one really close to you. It basically follows candy gnome mechanics and will run away from you and will eventually disappear if it gets too far off your screen. If you manage to kill it before it runs off the screen too far, it will have a guaranteed death drop chance and can also drop the murky toxin which is another one of the white bags to be found. Now we should talk about what classes are best for the sewers. Now depending on how fast you want to run through them, what level your pet is, and how experienced you are generally with the game, this will change. If you have a lower leveled pet, say a rare, but want to run through at a really fast rate, the rogue is the best way to go. Since the rogue is a universal rushing class, it can be used to rush just as easily with a high leveled pet. The good thing about rogue is that you won't actually get sicknessed when you walk into the sewer water if you are cloaked, meaning that you won't actually have to run the risk of getting sickened when crossing through rooms, as there is actually no pathway and you have to walk through the sewer water to actually cross between rooms. 
When rushing on a rogue, there is only really one enemy that you actually need to watch out for, and that is the brown slimes. These little buggers are the only ones that will quiet you in the dungeon, and we all know that is bad news for a rogue, so avoid them at all costs. If you can't, you're gonna have to kill them, but that's really about that. Most of the time you can just plane walk over them or just run around them. Yellow slimes are also kind of annoying, but they won't quiet you. They just slow you and that can maybe cause you to uncloak in a spot that you don't want to uncloak in because you're too slow and then you might get overwhelmed. So keep a plane walker handy. It definitely helps out a lot. The other class that is amazing at rushing the sewers is the Paladin. What's interesting here is that the Paladin's ability will boost your health as we all know. However, this boost in health isn't affected by sickness, meaning that there is actually a way to heal yourself if you are inflicted with the debuff. If you have a high level pet, you can literally just run through and spam your ability without a worry in the world. Just don't get too cocky because you can get quieted or overwhelmed if you're not careful. So stick with the path wherever possible is really the massive thing here. Stick to the path and you will pretty much be safe if you can clear off the enemies in time. If your pet isn't as leveled, no worries. Just take things a little slower and use your damage buff to clear off the few enemies as you go so you don't get overwhelmed. But really the principle's just the same. Stick to the path, use your pally buff when you're getting a little bit hit with damage and you want to regen a little bit. And if you're on the path anyway, most of the time, you aren't actually going to be sickness, so your pet's going to be helping you out. So really, it just helps if you stick on the bar. <laughs> if you've never done the sewers before, I'd just say take your time and clear each room as you go. It's pretty easy on any class if you do it that way. I sometimes like to use the little pillars in each of the rooms as like a shield from damage. That seems to help me take less damage, I find. Now for the moment you've all been waiting for, the boss fight. Like the lab, you can only enter the room from the bottom, and if you want my advice, I strongly recommend making sure no enemies follow you into the room. Since the boss armor breaks, you don't want a slime insta-killing you without even having a chance to react. Like the abyss, Gulpud will only activate if you get close enough, so to clear the slime gods around him, just walk through the sewer water on the outskirts of the room. Once you've cleared off the slime gods around him, you can then start shooting him. Depending on how much DPS you have, the first phase will go differently. If you don't kill him fast enough, he spawns little slime dudes around him that'll look overwhelming, but they're not really that bad. They don't do too much damage. Just focus on the boss during this. Just try and avoid standing on top of him, because once you actually get him to push into the next phase, he'll start armor break shots again and you could insta-die. If you do have lots of DPS, this mini slime dude phase is completely bypassed and he then transitions onto his next phase. He then splits into two smaller versions of himself, which upon death split into two more versions. This phase is kind of chaotic, but if you're on a knight, you can stun them, or if you're on a pally, you can just heal through the damage anyway, so it's not really too bad. Once you kill all four of the mini slimes, he then grows in the center of the room. This is his last phase, and it's what kills most people if you aren't careful. You can't stun or paralyze him during this phase, so he will chase you. He targets the closest player, but if you're soloing, obviously you're the only target. To do this safely, you stand here and walk back, avoiding his red armor break shot and possibly even the slow green shot if you want to. I like to rotate around as I get almost to the entrance of the room and take him back, but if you're not confident with turning in this phase, you can keep backing out of the room and drag him with you, which should be safe assuming you cleared the room previously. I should also mention that if you're on a rogue specifically, if you cloak on his last phase, he actually just doesn't target anyone and you can just stand there and shoot at him. So that's really easy if you are on a rogue specifically. After a bit of shooting, he will eventually die and you will get a death pot if you solo. The good thing about it is death drops a lot more in this dungeon. So if you have like three people, three people are going to be getting death, unlike in an abyss where like maybe one person will get it. So it is a lot more profitable if you've got a lot of people running through them. So you don't need to worry about people stealing your loot as much. And then obviously the boss also drops the two white bags that are obtainable in the dungeon as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial slash guide. I hope I helped you out a little bit or gave you some information that you didn't know previously. Like, comment, subscribe for more and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Fuck. <laughs> fuck, 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 fuck. This isn't good. This isn't good at all. Let's get out of here. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Let me go. Oh, <laughs>